What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, February 26th, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Forbes, 30 under 30, a.k.a. the second best baby blues in San Francisco. He has been demoted because they are now genetically enhanced, a.k.a. the engaged one at Tim Gettys. Let's him host. First time with you on the show in... Forever? In a kitten's mitten, you know what I mean? That is not a real it's phrase. Like, it's like a fortnight, but one day longer. Wow, okay, yeah. so it's two weeks in a day. 15 days. Wow, mm -hmm. huh. Kitten's Spencer. mitten. Kitten's mitten. We just started here. Why, why is kitten's mitten 15? they have those little the beans. You know what yeah, I mean? Oh, yeah. Have you counted the beans? Yeah. 15. Huh. <laughs> 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 it does me well to be with you, Tim Getty. Uh, there is so much motherfucking news today, ladies and gentlemen. Square is going to be doing cross-gen games for quite a while. There's a whole bunch of new games from developers you love and so much more, and we're getting into it all because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show, patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. You can give us your questions, comments, concerns, squad up requests, and everything under the video game sun. Plus, you can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames to get the show ad-free and with the exclusive post show that's only posted there. However, if you want... You can watch it live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. If you're watching live, you have a special job. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosterteeth.com, and listening on podcast services around the globe. Uh, housekeeping for you. Remember, uh, Boss Baby Barrett played through all those Zelda games for you for Zelda in review. He is now doing, of course, a YouTube premiere March 3rd, that is next Tuesday, uh, 2 p.m. Pacific, youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. You can come over there, watch it, see it, do the thing. From what I've it. seen, it's fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. I haven't seen anything about also, it. Also, uh, it is closing in on four hours. It's real. Holy fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I did not realize oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If I remember correctly, it is closing in on four hours. And it's going to be a YouTube the content. Mm -hmm. Barrett will be in there with, in the comments with you guys, hanging out, having fun. Yeah. It's going to be fun. All right, that's Tuesday, March 3rd, mm -hmm. 2 p.m., YouTube premiere, youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Breath of the Wild. I've been, I've been having an itch for Breath of the Wild. Yeah. But it's like I, I feel I feel it in my bones, Greg, Yeah. that there's going to be not a re-release, but some type of like once the Switch Pro comes out or whatever, I feel like there'll be like an enhanced version. Won't that just be the Breath of the Wild 2? Well, there'll be that as well. Sure. But I just, I don't know. I don't know. There's something. To, I want to replay Breath of the Wild. What do you think they're going to do to it? They just bundle it with the DLC that they I put out? I don't know. Make it run a little bit better. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Maybe bump up the when, when are you expecting your Switch Pro? Um, uh, at this point. I think Nintendo gave up on video games. <laughs> wow! Done. Yeah. Wow! With uh, the, I mean, they have Game of the Year Animal Crossing coming out. They do. What? They do. That was it. That's Less it. than a month. That's their, their swan song. Like, oh wow! That's it. They're oh, like wow. this. Will, this will sustain the Switch yeah. throughout the rest of the years. At this point, I'm thinking early next year. Okay. Yeah. What if it never happens? It's gonna. Happen. Is it gonna be have like weird like exhausts on it and like some kind of like. <laughs> I <laughs> I that. Like, that's why. That's how. But the see, that's why I'm waiting for Breath of the Wild. I understand. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you to our Patreon producers, James Davis, David Mindtel, the Mind Freak, Mohammed Mohammed, the Nanobiologist, Frank Furter, Black Jack, Patrick Higgins, Travis Gajkowski, Drew Garnier Frutis, Dominic Shorter, uh, Ginny Burnt, uh, Joseph Solar, and Katie Gallagher. Today, we're brought to you by the Besties and the Gaming Ride Home Podcast, but I'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin the show with what is and forever will be. The Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news. Six items on the Roper Report. Oh, Baker's dozen. Also, you're wrong. Steven in your wrong says my cat has 24 beans. Just an FYI. <laughs> Something's wrong with your cat. Steven. I think he grew the extra nine after he was no longer a kitten, right? Uh, number one on the Roper Report. Square Enix won't make PS5 or Xbox Series X exclusives for a while. This is Samuel Tolbert over. At Windows Central. If you intend to stick to your current consoles for the time being, you'll still be able to play new Square Enix titles for a while. According to a Q&A held during the company's recent financial resultings briefing, uh, Square Enix is not interested in making games exclusive to the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 for the time being and will instead develop cross-generation games. When asked about the company's plans for next-generation consoles, Square Enix stated, quote, The next-generation consoles will have, backwards will have backward compatibility. So, we plan for the time being to make our new titles available for both current and next-generation consoles. It will therefore be somewhat farther down the road that we release titles exclusively for the next-generation consoles, end quote. 
Tim Tam, thoughts? I will never forget the day that Andrew Renee was sitting right here. Yeah. And Tim Geddes, me, was sitting right there. And Xbox announced Game Pass and that all the first party titles were going to be on it. And it yeah. was just like, this is a day that's going to change video games. And I feel like all these decisions are all leading to this. This is such bonkers news. This. This in particular? That, yeah. Right here, not surprising. Now, where we're at currently. Sure. But can you imagine even four years ago hearing this and just be like, yeah, there, there's going to be new console launches and there's not going to be exclusives from Xbox or Square mm, or these saying. third party guys. Saying. They're like, oh, we're like we're gonna like pump the brakes a bit. It's fantastic. This is such good news for gamers. Yeah. Because they're gonna be able to buy the games without worry, without fear of, oh man, what about my save file? I'm gonna start Final Fantasy VII here. I don't want to have to like sure. Sure. whether I have to buy it again or whatever. I'm gonna have to start over. Like, there's no way that save's gonna work. Yes, it is. This is great. This yeah. is fantastic. Hot off the heels of the uh, CD Projekt Red news. This isn't quite that good. This isn't quite that, you know, um, exact uh, of what they're talking about, about like free patches. I'd love to hear about that. Yeah. Um, but I think this is a good sign. I want to see more of the third parties kind of come forward and talk about their plans a bit more concretely uh, because I want all the games to be enhanced. But I'm with you, but that's the problem, is that this isn't, this still, uh, on the heels of Xbox and smart delivery, Phil Spencer's uh, big uh, conversation, you know, starting on Monday, mm -hmm. and then CD Projekt Red getting involved, and now Square, there's still m too much room and too much fog in the room to understand what the fuck's going on. Kebabs writes in to patreon.com slash games and says, what's up, KFGD crew? Today, Square Enix confirmed that all of their games currently in development, including Final Fantasy VII Remake and The Avengers, will be available on next-gen consoles. What got my attention was the use of plurals, consoles. Does this mean that the PS5 will have a smart delivery system like what the Xbox Series X will have? It sure sounds like, at the very least, we'll be able to pop PS4 discs into the PS5 and play that. Well, come on, yes, that's confirmed, as we've said. Backwards compatibility for PlayStation 5, known, done, fine. Mm -hmm. That's why Square Enix is doubling down on this. Then it gets into this weird, murky waters, right? Where Square specifically, right, and the quote is saying, uh, time plan, the time, for the time being, we plan to make our titles available for both current and ge next generation consoles. So are they saying there that there's going to be a PS4, PS5, PS4 copy and a PS5 copy, an Xbox One copy, and then an Xbox Series X copy? And if so, does that then, how many people are going the CD Projekt Red route of saying, well, if you already own the game, then we're putting out the thing. Are we reading too much into CD Projekt Red's comment? Of course, Cyberpunk is a different ball of wax than a game that would be launching uh, with the PlayStation 5 consoles or after the fact right where cyberpunk will already be on the shelves avengers will already be on the shelves uh final fantasy 7 will already be on the shelves by the time these new consoles come around so when they say you know we're going to make these titles available for both current and next generation consoles they started with saying it has backward compatibility so are they saying that it's just going to be the one or are they going to put them out in the same boxes or are they need to do the patches and if they do the patches then are they going to charge for the patches on on playstation but not on xbox and then of course so many people want to point out the smart delivery already exists and if you put in your xbox one you're going to get a different thing than if i put in my or your xbox one x i'd put in a different thing and i get xbox one stuff and i wouldn't get the 4k textures because it wouldn't know that so is this just a texture pack or is it really a change of the game and then what happens to the people are they getting mad who thinks the developers that's are? my thing is everybody really project I, red? I feel it's it's very clear i feel like it's one of those things where if they there's the shady side of this and yeah. i feel like the publishers that decide to take that route are going to get a lot of feedback from the the community what now i know, I know this is a ball of wax here what is shady to you? shady shit would be like charging for these type of things when it's going to be a new standard that there's no fee for that but is that the standard? I think that, that it needs That's to be. That's the biggest question. I think it like has to be. With like, Here's the thing. I feel like there's. it needs to be a completely kind of like we're all in this together high school musical moment where Never Sony that, and man. Microsoft need to kind of just be like, and the publishers more importantly than anybody, need to all be like, hey, this gen's weird. Like, this is not a traditional, everyone moves on, so we all need to, you know, convince people why you need to buy the new system. It, it's kind of just like, hey, there's going to be new systems. Everyone's going to want the new systems, but we're not really giving them an exclusive, exciting reason for those new systems. So let's just all be cool. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I feel like it helps everybody to kind of have a standard thing so people can understand why they need these new things. Because a lot of this uh, to normal people would be like, I don't need a new console then. I already have a PS4. Yeah. I already have an Xbox. Yeah. Right? I feel like there needs to be this excitement of not taking that in a negative way, taking that away of like, hey, well, oh, now there's no fear of me buying Avengers or Final Fantasy VII because I know that they're, I'm going to enjoy them now and I'm only going to enjoy them more when they have you know, better versions or whatever on the, the next consoles. And I do think it's going to be texture packs. I do think it's going to be patches and stuff. Like we've, We're seeing it now. We're continuing to see it. Xbox 
fully announcing that they're doing it for all the first party titles. And then CD Projekt Red hot in the heels coming out saying they're doing it, granted only on the Xbox side. Is CD Projekt Red only saying that on the only on the Xbox side because Sony hasn't said anything? And yeah, if they, are they is, are they only saying that because Xbox is the only one who's talking about this? They're reacting to the news. Alongside they literally it. reacted to the news. Yeah, was that a, a a joint effort between Xbox PR and CD Projekt Red PR, or was that CD Projekt Red being like, oh, now it's time to make our news announcement? Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Oh, 100%. percent. I'm like, with, if, I, don't get me wrong. I, what I'm saying about this is. I don't. You say it's clear what should be done. I'm uh-huh. saying I, I'm unclear on what's actually going to happen. But, uh, but like, I'm only saying that be, it goes back to the CG product red because imagine if Sony had come out already and said smart delivery exists, then I think whatever their version is, then I think the CG product red would have immediately said that as well. Of course, of course. And I think that with that, Square's just kind of working from a different perspective. They're just not talking about Xbox. They're talking about next gen as a whole, not individuals. Yeah. Because I don't think they want to commit to anything. So sure. I think that that's why. It's like, it's just we haven't heard from Sony yet. That's the only reason that Square's not directly coming forth and being like, this I is think how it's going to work. Regardless of 8K texture packs or whatever the hell is going on and what like advanced versions you could get on a new console versus your old console, I think in general, Square's plan here is not surprising and makes sense because both PlayStation and Xbox, right, when they talk about backwards compatibility, talk about the box playing, the new boxes playing your old games better than before. Mm-hmm. So in general, like Avengers is going to run, I, you can hopefully knock on wood and say better on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X than it would on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Yeah. Like that's normal. It's just when you get into this thing of CD Projekt Red and Xbox's statement, because even when we were talking about it at length this week on multiple shows, my back and forth about it is I don't, even if this hadn't been the case, I wouldn't. I don't think you're you would have seen the same. Hey, here's this game remastered. You know what I mean? Like I don't think you would have seen that same gusto from like last generation. I always use last of as an example. But why? Well, why, why? Why would you say that? Because I think now that it is backwards compatible, it is a different ball of wax. Whereas like for Last of Us, it needed to be remastered for PlayStation Four because you couldn't run the PlayStation Three version on it, and it was a game that came out li- later in the PlayStation Three life cycle. You want to make sure that this game that's acclaimed, if, you know, critically acclaimed, a uh, huge hit with the fan base. If you are a f- person jumping into the PlayStation Four, like so many people clearly did, you have an actual way to play that game and have that w- ready to go. Whereas yeah. now with backwards compatibility, I don't see that being a- as much needed. That you have to look at the PlayStation Four lineup or the Xbox One lineup and be like, cool, which one of these games are we going to remaster and resell right away and as its own thing? You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like it, that definitely has a lot to do with it, but I also just think that as long as there's new technologies that can add to the experience of the old games, they're going to want to find a way to like add that shit to it. And I feel like this gen definitely has those things. Last gen had those as well. Yeah. Every gen has had it, right? Every gen has had the remasters of the, the gen before it in some way or another, right? Going, I mean, even like look back to PS3 and 360. How many PS2 trilogy collections were put out on the PS3? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And granted, PS3 only semi kind of backwards compatible. Um, That's the thing is like there, we get into all these asterisks, and mm-hmm. I really think we're beyond those asterisks now. And I think that it's what you're saying, right? Is like we are at a point, you know, when you want to sit here and talk about Game Pass and Andrea Renee and everything, right? We're at a point in video, the video game console consumer timeline where we won't accept the bullshit when there's already clear answers how not to accept the bullshit. Mm -hmm. And so if it is the idea that Game Pass games are going to look fucking stunning on this uh, Xbox Series X because of these patches, then why would I go buy Fallout New Vegas remastered if they were doing that, which they wouldn't, right, on Mm -hmm. PS5 when I could just get it over there for this? Yeah, totally. Like The bullshit is going to wear thin really quickly, and you... If you're Xbox, especially, you hope that then that shines through, that our services are better than they have to do if it. If PlayStation 5 is doing it the, uh, the wrong way or the different way or whatever way. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the thing is like there's it's very confusing right now because we don't have all the answers. But to me, this is becoming very clear. This there's a, the argument I've been having like for the last year with Fran about Fucking how Fran. is Halo Infinite going to be released? Like, is it going to be multiple SKUs or is it going to be one game? I was right. Like, th- this is now turning into a very crystal clear vision of where video games are leading for me. Yeah. And I totally see it as you need to do this stuff. Like, these third parties, of course, they're going to want to find every way to nickel and dime uh, their way into making money. But as far as I'm concerned, selling copies of of Final Fantasy and Avengers is the way that they're going to make the money. And, like, the games, are, the words backwards compatible, I think, are going to fade out fairly soon. Because it's not going to be about, sure, it's a nifty feature that you can play your old X, original Xbox games, right? And that's great for a lot of people and whatever. It's not going to be about that. It's about being able to play any video game you're trying to play at that time and yeah. not thinking of it as last gen, this gen. They need to talk about it that way right now just to like keep that next gen exciting. But by next year, it'll just be like, oh, you're playing Avengers. 
no, hopefully. If yeah, we good. better be. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, even if it's not good, somebody will be playing it, I assure you. But uh, no, you're right in the money. And this is what I was talking to uh, Blessing about on Monday when all this was happening. We were going around and around with it. It was that idea that when I was thinking about it, I was thinking about it in the classic way we've all been trained, right, with next gen, current gen, old gen. And it would be those ideas of, well, yeah, you know, bringing the last of us over do 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 over like when in reality what we're talking about is bringing destiny over right bringing avengers over bringing division over and like these games that are ecosystems unto themselves fortnite mm-hmm. these things that are already there and already have their hooks in you and you already have a legacy with of course those games have to be brought over and yeah would how how upsetting would it be to be told that yeah you have to buy uh rainbow six again you have to buy a uh, division two again in an xbox version on it or the xbox one X, series x version that would be the same thing it's just better you know what i mean like those kind of games that are living and breathing you feel like have to just look better and run better on those other consoles the, the new consoles yeah yeah great time to be alive it is a great time to be alive none the least reasons what uh it's gonna be number two there's a bunch of new games announced today from developers you really like. We'll start with Fuser from Harmonix. Uh, in Harmonix announced this new game, Fuser. Kevin, I put trailers in here. Now, if you want to run them as B-roll, that'd be cool. Fuser, though, I think should definitely be muted since it uses music. Mm-hmm. So I would mute this trailer if you're going to show it up there or whatever. And this is their very animated thing, but I'll read as it plays here. But mute it, Kevin. Sorry, sorry. It's okay. Mute it on the Okay, cool. Uh, Fuser from Harmonix coming to Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, PC, and Xbox One this fall. Polygon reports, Fuser will include more than 100 songs that players can mix in real time, grabbing the vocals from Little Nas X, Old Town Road, and mashing it up with the guitar from The Clash's Rock uh, Casbah, and the bass line from the drums and drums from 50 Cents Into Club. As you play and take requests from uh, festival attendees, you can throw in a little stir fry by the Migos. Oh, man, these people, I don't even know these people. And a, dro- <laughs> and a drop from Good as Hell by Lizzo. Hell yeah, Lizzo. Hell, maybe you just want to grab the whistle part from Smash Mouth's All Star for a little spice. Sure, sure some do. So, of course we do. Some of the game is about hitting the beat, but Fuser is more about being creative and keeping the crowd hyped up uh, than it is about uh, all wiki wiki with a plastic turntable controller. Players have four decks to manage, uh, and there are a few restrictions on what you can throw into the mix. Uh, Want to have four drum tracks all going at once? That's fine. Or piano, bass, and two sets of vocals? Go for it. Um, Harmonix had been in town showing this game off. We had tried to make time for it. Our schedule is too busy. They were nice enough to come by here and just show me some laptop footage and talk to me real quick about it. Seems super. I mean, I I loved like Rock Band Unplugged and all that stuff, and I love Rock Band obviously and DJ mm-hmm. Hero. Like Apple it's too. it's this weird in between of drop mix combined, which is that card game they put out combined with what we know, but not having the Note Highway and like these different records that are laid out and using and stuff. I only got to see it in a video that, mm-hmm. that and there's a whole bunch of videos. I think IGN is 15 minutes of it up right there. I'm interested. Yeah. And like what they were playing sounded interesting, but like to be dropped into and it was like freestyle they showed me. I'm like, I don't understand what the fuck is going, going on. on. Right? I'm not a DJ. It seems like the buzz from it so far today, though, is people actually are interested in it. Seems like That's cool. cool. Yeah. yeah, I'm not. Yeah. And I'm a music guy. I'm a music. rhythm guy. No, I absolutely love music and I love music TV. games. But I, I don't I, I don't really like the whole make your own type of music games. And yeah. This seems like that. There's definitely an audience for that. That's cool. Definitely not what I want to see from harmonics. But yeah. What do you want to see? Amplitude. Hell yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always and forever. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited to see more of it get my hands on it when it actually happens. But who knows? Yeah. Um, up next, Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon. Kevin, there's a trailer for this one. This is the one actually after it. So I need the second trailer there. Thank you. Uh, It's described as an action-packed puzzle adventure mashup developed in collaboration with Vine. This new take on Shovel Knight franchise is a falling block puzzle game with a unique dungeon-crawling twist. Delve with Shovel Knight into the depths of the pocket dungeon on an action-packed puzzle or adventure mashup like none other. Join your mysterious guide, Puzzle Knight, uh, as you shovel through scads of foes, procure your new equipment, and battle bosses, uh, both familiar and new. Explore a tale with endless twists, turns, and quests. Uh, I'm sorry, no. Endless twists and turns. Quest as your favorite heroes. And even challenge a friend for fast-paced head-to-head competition in Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon. Uh, no release date or official platforms in any of the press releases or publications. However, PlayStation did tweet it's coming to PlayStation 4. <laughs> so probably coming to PlayStation 4. Where else? Who knows? Uh, but yeah, you see, what, what's your take on this? Because you love Shovel Knight. Oh, yeah, dude. Shout out to Shovel Knight, man. Like, we Shout out to Yacht Club. Recently... They also released a new trailer for that Cyber one they're doing. Yeah, Cyber 
Shadow, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good lord. Yeah. I need that game freaking now. Yeah. Um, shout out to, to Shovel Knight. We've been doing a lot of the Gamescast topics of most iconic uh, Nintendo games, you yeah. know, PlayStation games, Xbox games, all that stuff. And multiple episodes, there was a, a fight for, for Shovel Knight. And he ended up not making the cut. But that's because I think that Shovel Knight is a similar thing to like Fortnite, where Fortnite is just... Fortnite's iconic for what it is, not tied to a specific system, sure. right? It's yeah. tied to the time being iconic. Shovel Knight to me is, and will go down in history, as the most iconic indie character, right? Like, I feel like this, Shovel Knight is the Mario of indie games wow. in the sense that it, it's now like, look, Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon, Shovel Knight Dig, Shovel Knight ter- like being this amazing, like, value. Kind of, well, <laughs> the, the treasure trove being the, the amazing value, their, the way they supported teams. it, the way that, like, they redefined what DLC can be for a platformer, um, the way that they just made a great game to begin with. Right, yeah. with an amazing cast of characters that you can then kind of take and put into all these different things. The way that Shovel Knight makes appearances in almost every popular indie game that happens, it's like it's so it's so cool to see, right? Yeah. So yeah, if you're uh, a visual listener, you just saw it. But if you're a listener, listener, Shovel Knight, yeah, it's like kind of like a you're ma- you're making chains together, hitting them. Like it's not match three, but it's kind of like match three. You know, it, you yeah, it blows up. Dude, here's the thing though, it's like. These guys have proven they don't just make games just to make games. They yeah. make great games based on games that you've played before, based Yakuza, on elements yeah. that you love from from all these different genres. And that's the thing is like the original Shovel Knight trilogy, it's like those are fantastic platformers. This, I guarantee, is going to be a fantastic puzzle game because yeah, like totally. they care, you know? Totally. And like that's, we don't see that enough. Caring. Totally. And then your final announcement of the day, Platinum is publishing an original game. This is Brian Ashcraft at Kotaku. For years now, Platinum Games has been making games under contract or with the cooperation of publishers, whether that was Sega or Square Enix. Now, it's finally making a game that it fully owns and will self-publish. Right now, the working title is Project GG. In an official release, director Hideki... Hideki Kami. God damn it. Really? I spelled them on everything. I uh, said, unlike any of the games we've made so far, it's going to be 100% Platinum Games title. For everything from its setting and characters to uh, the game, it's the game to its game design and story, to how it's promoted, Platinum Games is fully or is in full control. As a creator, it's hard not to think of my games as my children, he continued. After all, it takes a lot of hard work to raise them up and a lot of love, too. However, once they're done, any choices about them are entirely out of my hands. So, for example, no matter how many times people tell me, uh, you should make a sequel to this game, or I'd love to see it on that console, there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, back to uh, Brian. Uh, the project's short teaser is short on details. There is a person in some kind of suit. There are rocks and smoke. Uh, smoke. <laughs> I see a cat. This looks like a scene from Ultraman with a, gi- with a giant hero battling a kaiju. Currently, uh, the platform genre and release date are all to be excited uh, to be decided. But you see it here, yeah. This looks awesome. This looks awesome. Right? Yeah, this is Shiba Inu. It's all you really need. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it looked Digimon like he was gonna get stepped too. on. He did not get stepped on. You should go watch the trailer though and see the robot man fight the giant monster man. Yeah, robot man design. Not the biggest fan of. But hey, there's a lot of design, smoke and fog in that real too. Real fucking dope. Yeah. A go go. Yeah. Uh, well, number three. Joe, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that was the thing. He ta- it talks about as being a superhero trilogy in the end, right? Which would be what? Beautiful Joe. It would be Wonderful 101, and it would be this. Oh, that's right? pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Uh, exciting stuff there. Uh, we have more about uh, Wonderful 101, by the way, coming up in new dates. Wonderful. Date. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Uh, those games doing stuff for you, then? That looks really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested the, in that you gonna one. You going to play the Shovel Knight one? Shovel puzzle? Knight, probably not. Yeah. I'm not into those type of pu- or puzzle games necessarily. See, I'm not into. I was never into traditional Shovel Knight. That looks more like my jam. That yeah, game. that looks like a great Miller yeah, game. It does look like a great Miller game. And then yeah, we'll see what happens with uh, Fuser. Interesting name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number three on the Roper Report. There's even more evidence that Horizon Zero Dawn is coming to PC. This is Fraser Brown at PC Gamer. PlayStation 4 exclusive Horizon Zero Dawn's PC port has appeared on Amazon France following rumors that it would be making the leap to the other platform. Spotted by Reset Era, the listing is very sparse. It's just the name, publisher, and platform. The absence of any details, screenshots, or box art suggests that it is probably Amazon France hedging its bets, and Amazon listings aren't always accurate indicators of a game's announcement. The evidence is mounting, however. Rumors about a PC port serviced last year via YouTuber Anton Logvinio uh, in- in- indicating uh, that it would be launching as early as this month. It was thin, but its existence was verified by Kotaku. Uh, though it couldn't confirm a release date. With the end of the month only a couple days away, a February launch seems unlikely, except for the fact 
that February 28th is Horizon Zero Dawn's third anniversary. A surprise launch in a couple of days seems like a stretch, but perhaps Guerrilla and Sony will use the anniversary to announce it. That'd be a fun little announcement. Wouldn't it? That's what yeah. I thought, too. Yeah. Uh, Frank Furter wrote in, patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, says, Good morning, Greg and Tim. Amazon France is out here leaking the skew for Horizon Zero Dawn on PC with the edition that's being published by Sony themselves. With the anniversary of the game being this Friday, I have to ask, when will we get the announcement that this game is real? On one hand, it would make sense to announce this news on the anniversary because it's obvious. However, if Sony is moving its first-party games to PC as a new initiative for next-gen, wouldn't it make more sense to ha- save something like this for when you drop the PlayStation 5 details? No. Not at all. No. And yeah, I don't think this is a movement uh, overall. Yeah. Wait, what? Oh, I don't movement. think this is oh. a sign that, oh, PlayStation's putting all their first-party games on PC. Oh, I think it is. I don't think that all of them, but I do think if Horizon ends up on PC, like, what wouldn't, right? Like, I feel like at some point that would be a... They're testing the waters, and if they see the success in the dollar signs, why would they not do this? Especially moving into what next gen is. We keep talking about, you know, how Xbox has this kind of building this domination over having PC and console, and it's just like, why would Sony not want that if it could have it? And they've dabbled with it this generation. I feel like if anything, you want to get Horizon out there in more players' hands, so that when you announce Horizon Two on That's PlayStation, you're like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get you over here. I think it makes more sense that yeah, you do announce it on the anniversary here, and you're like, hey, guess what, everybody? It's the third anniversary of Horizon. We're excited to talk about the future eventually, but we're not there yet. Instead. Here's this great news. It's coming to PC, right? And that gets people to play a PlayStation game on their PC, which is awesome and crazy. And, oh, my God, you can't believe it's happening. But it also makes PlayStation look contemporary in this argument of what you're saying, Xbox being able to play these games anywhere, right, and have this whole thing. It shows that they're willing to play ball on that. But more importantly, I think it is reminding the world Horizons out there, getting people talking about Horizon, showing Horizon. And then when you do the PlayStation 5 event, you reveal Horizon as, I still think, a launch, or Horizon 2 mm-hmm. as a launch title. Yeah. And I think that that suddenly has a whole a influx great story. of players, right? It makes a lot of sense. You figure that if it is this whole PC bells and whistles thing of look at the hair movement and the you know the ray tracing yep, and all this exactly. garbo that you guys care about, right? Then when they reveal the PlayStation 5 and they talk about Horizon 2, they're able to say that it has that stuff built into the PlayStation 5. Yep. You have people who suddenly care about Horizon talking about PlayStation 5, being excited about PlayStation 5, and then they're in that way. Then hopefully, right, knock on wood, one, again, that whatever they're going to do with the PlayStation 5 announcement, they're going to rebrand PlayStation now. They're going to talk about an Hopefully. update to PlayStation now. And then that reminds you that, hey, if you want to play, play PlayStation games on your PC, you can via PlayStation now. I don't think it's the walls coming down of, hey, we're going to start publishing all our stuff over there. I think it's more of a strategic move to get you excited about something that's going to be about the PlayStation 5. I mean, I, th- I feel like it's not the wall coming down, but they definitely built a door in the wall, you know, that they can open when they want to. But I mean, by that argument, they've done that before, right? Because guns up and a couple other things. True. But, I mean, yeah. like even Death Stranding, that gets weird because, right, you know, whatever. Yeah, but yeah. still, I feel like that is an example. Like, you know, all the technicalities aside, people think of Death Stranding as a PlayStation 4 exclusive. Yeah. So it coming to PC is a huge deal. People look at that game as a first party title, right? This straight up, you cannot get more first party title than Horizon, right? right? right. Especially uh, with Herman. Yeah. You know, it's like, I feel like that is a big statement that. You know, this this can't be a one-off thing. And I, I, feel, I was on um, uh, Jeff Kanata and Christian Spicer's uh, podcast last week in uh, DLC, and we were talking a lot about Dreams. And Christian was talking about, like, why is Dreams not on PC? When will it be on PC? Because, like, that's the perfect type of game to, you know, give people the, the support that they need uh, ah. to make to make some some magic there. And it's like, at, that, at what point are you just building the PlayStation ecosystem? It's not about, you know, it's, it's bigger than just... PlayStation. It's about the games that PlayStation makes. Dreams is a perfect example of sure. that. Horizon is a that a tentpole event PlayStation game. Putting that on PC, I think, definitely opens the doors for any game to make the jump. I don't think everyone will, but like, if Horizon can, why can't God of War? You know? Yeah. Like, if Horizon is successful on uh, on PC, God of War is happening, right? No. Why not? Why would it? I, to my, make a uh, lot of money. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's the concern. I, I think Horizon is still just this uh, the gateway drug to try to get you. Yeah, and this, maybe I'm just thinking too old school about it, but I think it's the gateway drug to get you to come buy a PlayStation 5. I think that's why you do it. But I mean, God why not War, have more I, gateway drugs, right? It's just like, you know, God of War it, well, I mean, it would, it, it, exists. It, it would depend on the success of this move and if that was the Exactly. Thing. But it's like, that's the thing. is like, if this launch is, an, is successful enough, which I imagine it's going to be, when we're ready for God of War 2, why wouldn't they just put it on PC to keep that kind of train going of just like, hey, you, like, you're playing here. I don't think here, the timing's right. Because at that point, you already have the PlayStation 5 out there. 
you are in that, and whatever your PC you're going to put it on is probably going to be more powerful than PlayStation Five at that point. Like, I think the bonus here is yeah. like you get to come out and be like, "Hey, you liked all that shit we did with Horizon, right? That is happening naturally on your PlayStation Five. You know what I mean? We're getting you, the stuff and the bells and whistles and the whatever you're doing over there with ray tracing. That's happening dynamically in in Horizon Zero Dawn Two, ready to go. I just think there's too much investment in figuring out the infrastructure of getting a first party title over onto PC for it to be a one and done deal. Well, I think mean, I'm not saying it would never happen again. I just I don't know. I think it's, it would have to be very specific cases and I don't I think this is a very specific case of why to do it. Yeah. Remind people about the like God of War is already so entrenched. Even if you're a PC gamer, you know who Kratos is and you know that the last You know who great. it is, but you don't know that you need to play the sequel. Mm. You know what I mean? Like that's the thing is like I feel like, like there's so many PC players that don't know how good God of War PS4 is. You don't think so? I mean like that cuz again like I know we're talking what sounds like on papers apples and apples, right? But I mean God of War like fucking swept game awards and stuff not the game awards game awards yeah but but pc gamers are not console gamers like the pc gamers are their own group there are You're there's, me, there's crossover yeah but you know what i mean but there are people that like i <laughs> alfredo that trailer, that trailer alfredo not tied down properly has <laughs> transitioned over time right of yeah. being from xbox guy to pc guy he's not a playstation guy yeah but it's like if god of war was on play, uh, pc and he, he loved it and the god of war 2 was on playstation uh, he'd have to figure out a way to get a PlayStation, mm. you know, to get people hooked on this stuff. Like, because your IP matters so much, and why would you not put it out there, especially years later? <laughs> you know what I mean? Especially when it's like you already have it. You well, not the power of PlayStation now. Two point Tim. Yeah, maybe they'll call it five point You know That's what I mean? True. You'll be the, the Alfredo will be able to figure out how to double click on this window and open it up and fucking play a PlayStation game right there. Yeah, because right now he's like, oh, ah! siege, blah. Yeah. You know Frames what I mean? per second. It's not Jackie, enough. Of let's them. go to the movies. Shut up, Alfredo. <laughs> Number four on the Roper Report. This is a big one, even if you don't think it is. But stick with me. Facebook has bought. Sanzaru Studios. This is Rebecca Valentine at GamesIndustry.biz. Facebook has acquired Asgard Wrath developer Sanzaru Games for an undisclosed amount. Sanzaru will remain an independently operated studio, joining Facebook's Oculus Studios in a move similar to the company's acquisition of Beat Games last November. In a blog post, Facebook director of content Mike Verdu praised Sanzaru's previous work in VR, with the developer having made a total of four titles for Oculus since 2016. Verdu declined to speak about Zanzaro's future projects and added that the vast majority of Zanzaro employees will be jo- will would be joining Oculus Studios. An unknown number of employees will depart the company for the tra- with the transition as their employment was contingent on certain projects at Zanzaro. Uh, Facebook declined to c- comment on how many Zanzaro employees would not be joining the o- Oculus Studios. Uh, the California headquarters studio was founded in 2007 and has a total of three offices across California and Ontario. Alongside its VR category, it has worked on games including Sly Cooper, Thieves in Time, Sonic Boom, Shattered Crystal, and Sonic Boom, Fire and Ice. Uh, Just, I want to say within the last month, but it might within the last two months, Matt Kramer came through, co-hosted Kind of Funny Games Daily. Matt Kramer, of course, from Zanzaro. We were talking about if he'd he'd love to get back and do another Sly Cooper game. Uh, Get back in that Sonic Boom money. Yeah, exactly. He was the face of uh, Asgard's Wrath and uh, Marvel's uh, Marvel... Powers unite whatever the VR game they did oh, with Oculus yeah. was like. So he's doing a whole bunch of Oculus stuff over there, a whole bunch of VR stuff. Congratulations to them, but like super surprising and man, what a loss! I loved them. I thought they did such great stuff, and I, to see them now just be a loss for PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, it's like oh man, I wanted to see them complete their Sly games. <laughs> you know what I mean? They left, yeah. it, they left it on a cliffhanger. Remember, mm, he went back mm. in time, pyramids and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. you were know. highlighting stuff in there. What were you highlighting? Oh, I was Sonic trying to figure Boom's? out. Yeah, because Sonic Boom is like the worst Sonic game of all time. Uh, is it theirs? Um, but no, it's not these. These, are, say, the, yeah. these are the 3DS ones that aren't that bad. Yeah. I'm not going to say they're good. Yeah, they're sure. not that bad. Yeah, yeah. The Wii U <laughs> Sonic Boom game. Woo! Yeah, that was, that was a stinker. Oh, it was yeah. a stinker. Yeah. Well, now they're just doing VR, so go ahead. Yeah. Asgard's Wrath, everybody loves. So there you but go. I have a quest, so I don't know. And I, hey, that that Heroes thing was pretty cool. The Marvel. Yeah, I never. Thing. I don't. I, we did early. the demo, right? We yeah. did the demo when we talked to do other stuff, but I never played I don't know if you saw this. Definite segue here, okay. but uh, you know the void yeah. experiences. Yeah. Uh, they added it to San Francisco, yeah. So you can go there now. They have the Ghostbusters one, though. but they do have the Marvel one. Yeah, Marvel Studios, man. Uh, okay, it's not Ghostbusters though, you know. Yeah, it's Marvel Studios. I know, but I looked at it and it was like, oh, Spider Man waves at you. I'm like, all right, yeah. <laughs> uh, number five, a sad one. The Konami Code creator has died. This is Matt Perslow at IGN. The creator of the Konami Code, Kazu Hai Sa. Hashimoto uh, has died. The news was announced by composer and former Konami collaborator Yuji Takanochi. Uh, I, I didn't get it right. Uh, 
Take Nouchi uh, shared a message on Twitter that states that Hashimoto died last night, February 25th, and that the composer hopes the legendary programmer and developer continues to, quote, keep making games in heaven. He was 61 years old. The code, Whoa. up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start, was first implemented by Hashimoto uh, into the NES version of Gradius, uh, as it was found to be too difficult during playtesting. The code would give players a complete set of power-ups. The code was subsequently added to dozens of other games over the years. It is perhaps best known for its use in Contra, where it would grant players 30 lives. Learned a lot today. I thought it started in Contra. Mm -hmm. uh, the Konami code can be found outside of Konami games, too, thanks to its evolution as a pop culture icon. Fortnite, League of Legends, and Rocket League all have a Konami code, and even Netflix has a secret settings menu that can be accessed by, in accessed, uh, accessed by inputting an almost identical uh, code. It was referenced in Disney's video game theme movie, Wreck-It Ralph. Of course, that's super sad. 61 years old. Way so too young. Too young. Way too young. Uh, so, obviously... Thoughts and prayers, obviously, the family. But, mm -hmm. like, yeah, a good moment of remembrance because you want to talk about something in video games that transcended Iconic. video games, yeah. right? Yeah. Sad. Um, number six. A modder has given Cuphead a Celeste-like assist mode. This is Dual Shockers. I didn't have an they didn't have an author on it. I forget if Dual Shockers doesn't do authors, but I couldn't find it. Uh, a brand new PC mod for Studio MDHR's. Did I say Studio mod? PC mod for Studio MDHR's Cuphead has introduced an assist mode in a similar way to Celeste. The mod is intended to get intended to give the player some assistance in overcoming the game's difficult gameplay. Assist mode is the name of the mod and was inspired by Celeste, which included an assist mode allowing players to change the game's speed, other uh, offer infinite stamina, air dashes, and invincibility. These features allowed Celeste to be enjoyed by players who found the original game to be inaccessible. The Cuphead mod finds players being given an additional three health points, so instead of having three HP, they're given six. It also increases the weapon damage boost and gives players uh, 40 coins. Players can use the coins to unlock helpful boosts that will be, equip be equipped before entering a battle. The modder, new platformer, has also stated that players using the mod may want to start a new save game. So something for people out there who super super too hard. cool, man. I, f I feel like the little changes like that, like doubling the HP there, that that would make the game a lot more accessible and a lot easier to, you know, kind of limit the trial and error of it a bit to be manageable to people that don't like that type of thing. Because yeah. you get you'll have that much more time to learn the patterns and stuff. And I, I feel like that this is fantastic. Thing uh, these type of options, I, I love that they're becoming a bit more commonplace in games. Because why not? You know, are you surprised that M Studio MDHR never double back to add this? I, I am, but I mean, like, I feel like all it's awareness, right? I feel like them seeing this, I could totally imagine them being like, "Oh shit, that's actually a great idea." Yeah, you know, and like, if it's not hard to implement, why not like go back and add it? Like, they seem like the type of guys that care about that stuff and, sure. and would want to do that. Yeah, I'm surprised they haven't up to it because I think you know, obviously, as the conversation about accessibility has become more and more. Uh, at the front of video game conversation as it should be like that was always the thing for me of that trailer is back <laughs> just rattling down the street uh it was that idea uh that i always thought oh well you know if it's too hard for you right like if i'm i don't enjoy cuphead right because it's i know how punishing it is and stuff but not that i so like would i come back like i always appreciated celeste having the stuff there i never used it because i actually celeste gameplay clicked more for me in terms of what i was doing but it would be people when you talk to you know steve from able gamers uh, uh the blind gamer steve sailor right who they just did their first accessibility podcast by the way go check that out um but the, talking to them and the, the access the what I thought were difficulty options were really accessibility options, right? Of like, well, if I can't see the screen as well as you, I need more things. Or if I can't control as tightly as you, I need these ideas. And it was like, oh, yeah. And I know there's been an ongoing conversation, and especially around Neo, right? Where Neo 2 having a whole thing of like, oh, we're not changing the difficulty. Like, we don't, that's not what it was about. You know what I mean? Like, which there's this argument to it both ways of like, well, that's their vision for the game and what it is. They define it by being punishing and horrible. Not horrible. Punishing by, you know, and grueling. What, meanwhile, though, it locks out a whole bunch of players who will never get to enjoy that game. And so what, where are you? What's the push and pull of it? Yeah, it's complicated. It's, there's definitely a balance there. But, you know, I feel like Cuphead is something that should be enjoyed by all because it is, it's so good. But um, I'm also very excited that we're getting the DLC at some point. Some we're getting, point. We're getting more Cuphead. Yeah, I don't sure. know when the hell that's going to be. But I got like, announced and then just it got announced quiet. Like, I think quiet. two years ago? Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think they quietly said something on Twitter about it getting delayed. Uh, well, yeah, uh, even that was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. exciting huh. stuff though. Exciting stuff indeed. But Tam, also Ori. Holy crap! What about Ori? It's close. It's like days away. But Animal Crossing is so close. You know what I mean? That's just overshadows yeah. it. Can't do I it. I guess. Can't get excited. I can only be excited for one thing. 
but I'd like to be excited for more things, like, say, what came to the mom and grop shop. Where would I go to? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. Oh, today. Uh, Bass Tide on PC. One Finger, Death Punch 2 on Xbox One. House Flipper comes to Xbox One. House Flipper looks pretty dope. I almost got did it as my PSN game for the rankings and stuff. I'm like, that looks too too much. There's like, like too a much full game. It looks like a real thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, Hero Must Die, again, PS4 and PC. Vasilis on PS4 and Vita. It lives. Uh, Castle of No Escape 2 on Xbox One. Edgar, Bok Bok, and Bolzak on Switch. Catlandia, Crisis at Fort Paul Print on PC and Mac. Can I please see a trailer? <laughs> Kevin, for Catlandia <sighs> Crisis at Fort Paw Print. We can finally settle how many toe beans a cat has. Yeah. Arcane Showdown on PC. Ren on PC. Uh, Crocodile 3D on Crocodile PC. Crocodile 3D. Uh, Void Monsters 2, The Blight on PC. Reload on PC and Mac. Uh, Vapor Maze on PC. I Watch also want to see PC. Vapor Maze, Kev. Uh, Beyond Instinct on PC. Out of Space, PC, Max and Linux. Hold on, here comes the Catlandia trailer. Crisis at Fort Paw Print. No, that's me. That's me, Kevin. You do that thing again. Hi, everybody. It's Greg. <laughs> oh, my God. This is James Bond theme. Yeah, what would it be like? Have you ever wondered what it would be like? And it's, they we're customizing this cat. We're customizing the colors this to be a cat. This is some Joey Noel-ass bullshit. Oh, please bring this to console. <laughs> okay. Nugget, nugget. Oh, there you are. There's a cat bed. M multiple cat beds. Catlandia Crisis of Fort Paw Print. So they literally, oh, I was going to say, they sold this game on just letting us customize the cat, which I appreciate. <laughs> Fight dogs is the first thing we're getting here. Oh, here we go. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're fucking these dogs up. Fighting pigeons. Looks like it's got some, what, JRPG kind of mechanics here. We're going turn-based uh, combat. Picking our moves. Oh, that's hella funny. We got special. Cats do that. They do do that, though. friend cats. Shit, I'm in. Impossible. Kev, can I see a vapor maze? What? He said we already have it. He's so on top of oh. his job. He's got that. I want to play. I want to play this paw print game. This is exactly what I thought it was going to be. Vapor maze, colorful, first person running around a giant maze. I don't have the song though. Yo, this is awesome. Whoa, it's first person shooting. Good for them. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate you. We're looking around for more on Catlandia here. What's the plot of the plans for Catlandia is what I need to know. Uh-huh. And I can't find them. It's Polar Polar Tabby Interactive Incorporated. Looks like it's just PC at this point. They got to get on that because that could be a dozen game seller. You know what I mean? They could really do some stuff there. Several dozen could get out there and do it. Uh, I think I left off around Beyond Instinct on PC. Out of Space on PC, Max, and Linux. Arc Genesis is now available on PC, Xbox One, and PS4. Story of a Gladi Gladiator, the brutal arena beat em up set in ancient Rome, is out now on iOS and Android. Uh, today, Ubisoft announced that Lara Croft from Crystal Dynamics Tomb Raider will explore the halls of Brawlhalla uh, as an epic crossover. Players can now make their own luck as Lara Croft in a special Tomb Raider in-game event that kicks off today through March 16th. The in-game event features a new game mode, map, and music, as well as a new podium, main menu takeover, and bonus daily login gold. Wow. Wow, Brawlhalla. New dates for you. Um, the wonderful 101 Remastered is out May 19th in North America, May 22nd in Europe, June 11th in Japan. It's tracking for 40 bucks, uh, physical and digital. And I put this in new dates, but this goes down below. So hold on. All right. Tim, say something. Uh, I'm saying so many things. I'm very excited for this next bit um, because it's something very near and dear to me and Blessing's heart. Okay. And that is good Sonic games and bad Sonic games. Uh, and so let's go <laughs> to deals of the day. Uh, PlayStation Plus games for March have been announced. Uh, the free games are Shadow of the Colossus and Sonic Forces. Obviously, let's start with Shadow of the Colossus. One of the greatest games of all time. Remade to be another one of the greatest games of all time. Yeah. I absolutely love the remake that they did. Was it last year? Two years ago? Two years ago. Time okay. It cannot be last year. It was so, so good. It, it really kind of just enhanced everything that was good, and it got rid of everything that was bad about the PlayStation 2 original. And If you haven't played it, you definitely need to. Also, not that long. Yeah, they go fast. 2018 for Shadow Colossus for sure. There we go. Uh, and then, yeah, Sonic Forces. Sonic Blessing Forces. nailed his take here. Uh, Blessing wrote a take in because he had to go get a haircut today. So this is what Blessing says about Sonic Forces. 
Sonic Forces is on the bad side of Sonic games. A solid 6 out of 10. I played this game, got to the very last level, and said fuck it and never beat it because that's how little I cared about my experience with this game. It's not an abomination, it's just a very disappointing follow-up to Sonic Generations that could have been so much better, but paled in comparison in every single way. Xbox receiving Sonic Generations for games with gold and PlayStation receiving Sonic Forces is like when your mom's driving you home from school and you're like, can we stop at McDonald's? And she's like, we got McDonald's at home. Your mom is PlayStation, McDonald's at home is Sonic Forces. It is so freaking true. Yeah, Good job, accurate. Wes. That is absolutely accurate. Sonic Generations, one of the best Sonic games. Sonic Forces, one of the worst Sonic games. Direct direct sequels. I don't understand. I don't understand how they fucked it up so bad. Yeah. And Forces came out right when Mania did. Right after oh, Mania. Oh, yeah. That was real bad, man. Sonic Mania, great game. But, oh, Sonic Mania, fantastic. But it, seriously, Sonic Generations. Go check it out. It's on Games with Gold now. Or soon. Yeah. 13 days from now. <laughs> Uh, and then heads up too that uh, PlayStation Plus for March will get you the free trial weekend of Predator Hunting Grounds launch weekend March 27th through the 29th. Very excited about that game. What do you what do you what do you find? It's not launch weekend. It is. Isn't that the release? Oh thing? shit, dude! Yeah, it is. It is. It is. I, for some reason, I thought it was February. I thought it was now. Oh no 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 yeah. no no! Yeah no. For Predator Hunting Grounds that launch weekend. If you want to try before you buy March 27th through the 29th. I'm very, very excited. Turns out I'll be, that's my, when I'll be in home uh, with my mom, though, in Chicago. So i got to bring a PlayStation to Chicago, you know? Uh, then Twitch Prime announced its March stuff. Uh, begr- beginning March 2nd, Prime members can claim the following five free titles. Action shoot 'em up Fury uh, from the Game Breakers. Strategic Simulator Bomber Crew from Runner Duck. Action Adventure Typing Game, Epistory, Typing Chronicles from Fishing Cactus, Sci-Fi Nordic Noir, Mist Whispers of a Machine from Raw Fury, and physics-based puzzler Mugsters. Mugsters. From Raincout. So there you go. Of course, remember, that's if you have Twitch Prime. And if you have Amazon Prime, you have Twitch Prime. You get all these free games every month. You also get one subscription you can give away to any Twitch channel you want. Why not make it kind of funny games? I know what you're saying right now. You're driving the car. You're driving to work right now. You're listening. You're coming home from a long day. You're going to work, right? Uh, maybe you're driving the tractor. You're out in the fields. They're doing your thing. Maybe you're just doing boring office work, but you're listening to a podcast on Spotify, iTunes, whatever. Rate us there, by the way. Uh, but more importantly, though, you're like I don't use Twitch, but guess what? You have Amazon. And if you have Amazon Prime, you have Twitch Prime, whether you like it or not. You just go into your thing. You're logged into your Amazon Prime, right? You go into any your old browser. You do Twitch Prime. You go there. You link an account. Then you go to Kind of Funny Games. You give us the free sub. You got to do it every 30 days. If you don't do it, they just sit on your money. They take your money. They're counting on you not to use it. Millions of you don't use it. Why not use it on us? Why not call your mom right now? She's got Twitch Prime, right? Or Amazon Prime. Explain mm-hmm. everything. I just, just play this clip into the phone. I don't know if you have that technology. Play that clip, this clip into the phone, and then have mom do all that, and then have dad do it. Then you know what? Your grandparents, they dead. Make them Amazon accounts. Then wow. give it to us. You know what I mean? Morbid. You know. What? Well, I mean, you're still taking the social security, right? You faked yeah. it. Mm-hmm. You know, you fake the death of them, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's time for reader mail. You can write in at patreoncom funny games where you get the show ad free. <laughs> and speaking of ads, this episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily is brought to you by the Besties. Hey, listeners, we know you love all things video games and want to tell you about the Spotify original podcast called The Besties. Every Friday, the creators of The Adventure Zone, Justin and Griffin McElroy, uh, are joined by their two best friends and hardened video game reporters, Rush Frustick and Chris Plant, uh, to go deep on a single new video game. If you've been a fan of Polygon, you know these guys. They co-founded it. Plus, the besties cover all the major moments in video games in 2020, from the new console launches to Cyberpunk 2077 and beyond. Beyond. And at the end of the year, they do complete showdown, pitting all the top games of the year against one another to get to the top game of the year. It's pretty epic. But the besties can't do it without their fans who ride in each week with all sorts of goofy suggestions. It's like a book club for video games. Uh, of course, I say it all the time, Justin, a great person. He supported Oreo Ration from the very, very start. You should go support the besties. You can find the besties on Spotify, which also have your favorite podcasts, including this one, and music all for free. Listen to the besties for free only on Spotify. Then, it's the Gaming Ride Home podcast. I want to tell you about a great new podcast, the Gaming Ride Home podcast. It's a video game news. It's all the video game news. All the headlines, rumors, reviews, hardware leaks, release date confirmations, and more. All delivered to you every day at 5 p.m. Perfect for your commute home. Uh, The show is hosted by former Game Informer and IGN writer uh, Kyle Hilliard. uh, And it's only 15 to 20 minutes long. It's like Too Long Didn't Read as a Service. 
Kyle's online all day reading all the tweets, reading all the rumors, and consolidating all that chatter around the entire world of gaming uh, so you can catch up on everything that happened while you were busy living your life. Uh, this is the latest show from the Ride Home Podcast Network, the daily news podcast folks celebrating two years and 25 million downloads. Search your podcast app right now and subscribe to Gaming Ride Home. Tim? Yes. Are you ready for a question? Let's read them questions Alex? and then answer them. Duez wrote in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, Good morning, KFGD hosts. I loved seeing Imran's impressions of RE3 recently. With Resident Evil 3 feeling more action based than Resident Evil 2, do you feel like this could possibly be laying the groundwork for a much desired Resident Evil 4 remake? I feel as though this will make Resident Evil 2 and I feel as, I feel as though. This will make RE2, RE3, and a possible RE4 feel more like a trilogy that has a natural progression from survival horror to action horror. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. Thanks, Alex. Um, I, that, that would be very interesting. I don't know that necessarily would feel like a trilogy, though. RE4 is a very different game than RE2 and 3. And 3 is more action-based, 2 is more puzzle-based, but they're still very similar in style yeah and these remakes are similar in style um i i do think that there's an opportunity to change that i don't want to say fix because it wasn't broken in the first place if it ain't broke no um because especially with re4 being one of the best games ever um but i i'm interested in you know there definitely is uh chris right leon there's these characters jill all the, that everybody knows and loves from resident evil i want to see the remakes kind of Make their stories a bit more connected and concise because I feel like Resident Evil definitely after four jumped the shark, <laughs> right? And it, yeah. it just kind of like went absolutely bonkers crazy with uh, with five. Was five the co op one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I just was like, hey, here's like six was the giraffe blown beefy itself. Chris. And you're like, I don't need beefy Chris. And then yeah, the giraffe of six. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I definitely am interested in like, I wonder if they'll go back and remake one in the style of two and three. So do they need to? Because they already had done the remake of Ari. Because I feel like it, they don't need to. Yeah. But I feel like it get, would give them an amazing opportunity to flesh Jill out even more than they're about to in 3. Okay. And that would create a Resident Evil remake world that is like, oh, so damn good. And then I don't necessarily know that they need to remake 4 as a sequel to this. It could There could be a new RE4 in this world uh, with the characters that is based on the zombies. And it isn't... You know, going off and dealing with all the, the plague. So, do you think because you're Mr. Ari? And first off, you I'm not Mr. Ari. To be clear, I love Resident Evil, and I'm now becoming Mr. Ari remake. Gotcha. Okay. I'm okay, a big, okay. big fan of this. Sorry, my apologies. Mm -hmm. Of course, Mr. Ari is Brit from What's Good Games. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think we ever go forward again? Like, are we ever gonna hundred percent? Because like I liked uh, seven was so good. Yeah. Right. Like We're I gonna love get an that in VR and stuff, and We're... like I want it to be more like that. I hope it's more of a not standalone because obviously they tied stuff in at the end, but like I want it to be. Hey, here's a cool thing we can do in the RE universe. Yeah, I think that the, that will continue. Um, and I am shocked that we're getting Resident Evil Three before we're getting that. Uh, but I think that we'll we'll see that probably next year, some type of RE Eight okay. that is a sequel to. Do you think 7? they ever just reboot it from the ground up? And I start mean, all over I, and like our they call it Resident Evil, but it's not like you're doing like back of the mansion necessarily. You know what I mean? No, like they're not holding themselves to that. That's what I think these remakes are. That's okay. what I hope they become. I okay. hope that we end up getting a sequel to these remakes that is new, but in this world. Because they they nailed it. They they nailed this world, and that's why I want to see their take on the mansion in this style. I think that that could be super fucking cool. And I you know what I'd want more than anything. What's that, Tim Gettys? Is I would want a reimagining of RE1 where okay. it isn't just a remake again because we've already seen one remade. But I wanted them to remake the mansion but like add a whole bunch of new elements. You know, create a new backstory that leads into RE2 and 3. We have little hints of what went, what went on in RE1 in the remake uh, with the little letters that you're, yeah, you're, you're yeah, getting, yeah. right? But I would love to see them kind of like wow us in the same way that I was wowed by RE2 and I feel like we're going to be wowed by RE3. I was going to say yeah for RE3 what have you seen? I know yesterday obviously stuff was making the rounds people were excited I sat with Imran and we did the first impression oh what's that so, what's up? oh what's you, that? you can go on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and watch Imran's uh, 20 minute ish I think maybe 15 impressions of Resident Evil 3 remake he got to play for like 4 hours damn um, both the multiplayer mode and the, the single player mode multiplayer mode he said it was fine, whatever, but obviously people are there for the game, and the right. game he's saying is fantastic. Looking at it, it is 
I think the best video game, best looking video game I've ever seen. Really? I, You've I seen just, a lot of video games, Tim. Dude, it's it's fucking gorgeous. The RE engine is my favorite game engine. It makes everything look great, but this they're pushing it, man. Like they're learning every every single time a new game releases in it, it looks that much better. And um, we had B-roll that was the B-roll in the video was 1080, but the B-roll they sent us was 4K. And it is fucking stunning, man. Wow. Stunning. This worm monster, Greg. You're not going to believe it. I don't, I don't like worm scary, monsters. Scary, scary worm, monster. worm monster. I'm so excited for this, man. Again, weeks away from this game. How is that possible? I, I, I was saying, saying this in the first impressions, but um, if this game ends up being as good as it's expected to be, I still don't think that Capcom's ever going to get the credit they deserve for how mind-blowing it is that they're releasing games of this quality so close to each other. Yeah. And this game, having been announced weeks ago <laughs> and is now coming out in a couple of weeks nuts it's a new way you do it buddy uh sean g gets the con- final question of the day it says with the news that the creator of the konami code has passed away i was curious what other famous cheats you guys remember growing up with in video games do you wish the creators still did sorts of cheats knowing full well someone would find a way within minutes as in rip, rip them apart from the source code when you think of video game cheats what do you think of i mean it's two franchises yeah three franchises Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, sure. Grand Theft Auto, of course. Sonic the Hedgehog, the uh, debug yeah. mode, like that. They let you just fuck that game up, and it yeah. was awesome. Just built into it too. Uh, but yeah, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, big head mode, slow mo. See, for me, it's it's NBA Jam in Grand Theft Auto because yeah. NBA Jam was the oh yeah, get Bill Clinton on the team. Oh yeah, big head mode, do all yeah. these different things, right? Tony Hawk's Pro Skater though, the the slow mo mode, um, or it wasn't slow mo, it was a uh, anti gravity. It would, it would allow you to just fucking go off a ramp and just fly. And it was just like, I, it broke the physics of the game so much, but then it just became a different game. And it just worked in that way where it's yeah. like, you could play multiplayer with your friends and it, like, it would up the, the scores to just insane levels because you can just do spe- 900 after 900 after 900 in the air. And it was so much goddamn fun. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think of Grand Theft Auto because that was the jam. I mean, like I know that obviously this continues on for a billion different games in the series or whatever. But for me, it was Grand Theft Auto Three of like, okay, cool, like just turning it on, running around, you and your friends, like okay, infinite ammo, whatever, you know, all the guns unlocked, and then you just run around and see who could survive the longest, how many you know stars can you get? Absolutely, man. I I feel like so a couple days ago, um, Bioware was tweeting about the stats of how many people were. Uh, Renegade versus yeah. the, the yeah, other yeah, one, yeah. Paragon, in, in, right? Uh, yeah, Mass Effect. And um, like the, they were pretty crazy. It was like 92% were good and 8% were bad. It's like, wow, that's a lot smaller a, a group than you'd expect. And I want to see those stats for GTA 3 and Vice City of how many people beat that game without cheats? Because I bet that it's a real, real slim <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, group yeah. of people because yeah, everyone's yeah. been popping in there. I feel like I still have the muscle memory of... Uh, some of the the co- like infinite ammo code and stuff. Yeah. For, I, for G- if I was holding a, a dual shock too, I went woo! to like a Best Buy or something, and for whatever reason they had like a PS2 set up, and they had uh, Grand Th- uh, one one of the might have been actually might have been San Andreas, might have been PS4 that was playing San Andreas. But I went in there and like did the the cheats, and like yeah, I still have it. Awesome. It took me a second to get there. But I still have No them. way I could ever remember any of them. Really? Yeah, no way. No. Oh, it was always just a, the couple of the shoulder buttons, and yeah, then you yeah, do yeah. the, the spins on No, I on remember the, the it. I just, yeah, no, I, I just couldn't. I don't think I could possibly ever do it. Uh, I'm going to do the squad up. But have you seen Skate City yet? No. Apple Arcade. I downloaded it because, obviously, Apple Arcade, you get the games. They're just there. It's you know infinite, but I haven't fucked with it yet. This is the tutorial you're in, so don't judge it too harshly. Mm-hmm. However, though, Skate uh, Squad Up. Tyler, uh, no, sorry, Taylor Allen writes in... T- uh, to squat up. If you didn't know, squat up. I'm off my game today. You know what I mean? Like, I've, I've been talking about yesterday was a big day and I was exhausted at the end of it. I'm definitely not over it, apparently. You know what I mean? We mm-hmm. really got to start being serious about me only doing two shows because it's know. Just garbage the next I know, day. You man. Know what I mean, it's me. I, I try to hold you back. I know, I know. Fuck. It sucks. Um, Time for Squad Up. This is where one of you writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games. You give me your name, username, platform of choice, why you need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends come and find you. Everybody plays games together. Today, Taylor Allen needs help on the PlayStation 4. Uh, Taylor's uh, username is purger4382. That's P U R G E R 4328. No, 82. Uh, I, ha- I have kind of a niche squad up request. Sony San Diego Studios just announced the kind of return of online franchises in MLB The Show 20 with custom leagues. With the game fast approaching, I'd like to set up a chill, multi-season KFBF league, but 
I'll need at least seven other best friends who are interested. If you're interested in playing some baseball with other best friends and want to learn more, add or message me on PSN Perger4382. Good luck to you, Taylor, and all the MLB best friends. This is pretty cool. Yeah? I can see it. I can see it getting really good eventually. Okay. Yeah, because it's right now just yeah. like, here's how you ba- do the basics. Yeah. Okay, cool. cool uh, time to check in on You're Wrong. This is where people watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosttube.com, blah, 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 blah. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, people trying to be jerks, not going to take that. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not going to. You're yeah, coming dual shocking. Get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah, no, no, that's not. No, 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 not that. No, no, not the company, the site dual shockers. Uh, Jesus Christ. What does this even mean? RDMA2 stuff for PS5 GPU. GPU is not pretty sure. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. Um,. Oh, it's not a you're wrong, but an interesting wrinkle I like. Sid underscore X says, Death Stranding was also made in the Decima engine. Since it's coming to PC, it might just be converging circumstances that made it really easy to bring Horizon over. Interesting. Uh, oh, thank you. Nanobiologist has one here. Uh, Matt Kramer hosted just over two months ago on December 14th, 2019. Uh, here we go. The Cuphead article on Dual Shockers. Oh, I'm sorry, this is Nano again. The Cuphead article on Dual Shockers was written by Ben Bayless. It's just under the title and the picture header on the uh, their articles. Hmm. Couldn't see it, but thank you. Um, uh, Borzen says One Finger Death Punch 2 is also out on Switch and PS4. Um, the Overgrown Psychologist says You guys missed that Mickey. Mouse Castle Evolution comes out on PlayStation 4 and Xbox today. Castle Evolution. I got that one, I remember. Uh, yeah. Genesis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my parents bought that. That was a game I didn't ask for and I got on Christmas, and I was like, okay. Yeah. Was this like, is oh. the the remake that they did in, like, 2016? Uh, uh, Timmy, Timmy, Big Tum Tum says, Tim is wrong. There are no good Sonic games. You, my friend, are a bitch. <laughs> oh, bada bing, bada boom. Ladies and gentlemen, that's kind of funny games daily for Wednesday. The 26th of February, 2020. Uh, we got a post show to do. You can head over to patreon.com slash games. Check it there. See what we're up to, what we're going to talk about, answer some questions to see what's going on in the world of games. What's going Dude, on, What's man? going on? Let's get it's wild. Just bang. Uh, remember, Twitch Prime, Amazon Prime, YouTube, all that jazz. Subscribe, like, share, Spotify. Spay new to your pets. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.